All right, welcome back. So what we're going to do today is we're going to start looking at the code of the MP itself. So I have things loaded into Android Studio. Um, oh, I need to uh, put my ID.txt in here, which is something that we did yesterday. Uh, so I've got that set up. Um, and what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about what the app is and what it's going to become. And we'll start looking at some of the code together and walk through um, some things that you need to know to get started. Okay, so I suggest that you run the app when you're getting started just to get a sense of what it is, um, what's going on. So the app is an app that allows you to um, review the restaurants that are in the Shambana area and potentially see recommendations based on some data that we're going to provide. Um, so let's run the app. So I have an, a, an emulator configured here. Um, this is the starter code. Um, so we're starting in the same place together. Um, I'm going to run the app. This is going to take a minute. If you have an actual Android device, I would suggest that you use that to run your code on. You'll have a much, much better time um, than trying to run the emulator, particularly if you have a somewhat of a slow uh, machine to work on. Um, all right, so my emulator fired up, my build is running, I'm creating the app for the first time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna see what happens when the app loads up. What we expect to see is a list of restaurants. Um, and what we're gonna do over the course of the next you know weeks together is we're gonna build this out to add some features. We're gonna allow you to uh, show the restaurant list sorted, we're gonna add search functionality, and then we're gonna build a page, an activity, a screen for each restaurant and add some data to it based on some data sets that we give you to process. Um, one of the things I want to point out about this app is that you're actually building what's called a full stack mobile application. You're going to work both on the client, uh, which is the part that you would normally run on the phone, but we've also given you code for the server, which would normally run in the cloud or on some other machine somewhere. And all that code is in this repository together. Don't worry about understanding everything at first. We're going to get there over the course of the next couple checkpoints. Uh, our journey will take us and allow us to see pretty much every part of the app from why it looks the way it looks to what happens when various things uh, occur in the app itself to the backend server that's providing the data that the app is using to both render the list of restaurants and then make recommendations in the future. All right, so when this starts up, we see that, you know, I've got a list of, of restaurants. And if you've eaten out around here, you might recognize some of these names like uh, Signature Grill, right? Like, let's see, uh, Dos Reales, just down the street from me. Um, like Brew Lab Coffee. These are, this is a list of restaurants in this area. I also hope that maybe this expands your horizons a little bit in terms of uh, finding out what's around here. There are 255, I used an online tool to get this information, but there are 255 restaurants in this list of all sorts of different types. And I've removed duplicates. So chain restaurants that have a bunch of locations, I've just trimmed those down to one. Um, so this is what happens when you start things up and I've given you some idea of where we're going. Um, so Android can be very intimidating. And we're going to go step by step. I'm just going to look at it a little bit every time. So what I want to talk about today is what happens when your app starts up. And there are, um, so there's a concept that Android has called an activity. And that's a screen that's shown. So what we're going to do in a minute is we're going to look at some of the code for the screen that is shown to you right now um, when the app starts up. This is sometimes referred to as the main activity. So when you launch an app, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, you know, Snapchat or whatever you're using, there's usually a place that the app starts. Um, now, it turns out that this is not a convention. This is actually defined in the first file that we're going to look at. And don't worry about understanding everything that's in these files. We'll explain to you what you need to know. But this is something called the Android Manifest. Every Android app has one of these, and it defines certain important things about the application. For example, it defines some of the permissions that the application is going to use in this case, we're going to access the internet in order to make requests to our server that has information about restaurants. This also defines information about the application like the label that might be shown in the App Store or in various menus in Android. Um, but one of the things that's defined here is all the activities that the application has. So every screen that your application has, you define in the manifest. Um, and this piece of code right here, this, this is a... Um, the, this, this file is written in a language called XML, which is really a markup language. It's designed to represent information, right? It's not a, it's not a language for, you know, 
freeform text. It's got a lot of structure to it. Um, this particular piece of it indicates that this is the main activity. So when the app launches, using the manifest, Android knows that it should start up something called uh, main activity that's an mp.activities. So where do I find this code? I open up over here in my Java tab and I see all this code is in this package, edu.illinois.cs.cs124.ae, a little bit of AE, AY2021, academic year 2021, and MP. And here's the code in main activity. Um, so now let's look at some Java code together. I'm going to open up main activity. And now I start to see some stuff that looks potentially familiar. This is Java code. Up until now, we've been looking at this XML. It's been like a little strange, but this is Java. You're pretty much ready for all the concepts that we're about to look at. Um, you know, there's going to be a few new things along the way, but I would expect you at this point to understand 80 to 90% of, of what's in this file. Now, you might understand how it relates to how the application works, but I'm talking about syntax. Like, we know what a class is. We know what it means to extend something, and we know what it means to implement something. These are, you know, class hierarchies and interfaces, things that we've talked about. We know what a private variable is. We know what static means. Um, now, as you go through this code, I have really tried to make this code as useful to you as possible through extensive commenting. So the starter code that we have given you is as fully commented as I could manage with, with information about everything that you might need to know about the app as we go forward. Now, not all of this information is gonna be useful to you immediately, but hopefully you can come back to it in the future. One of the reasons I did this is because a lot of what we're gonna be asking you to do in the MP is actually mimic code that's already there. So we're not asking you to necessarily create your own thing based on new principles. Instead, understand a little bit of the code and then rewrite it to do something slightly different or write a piece of similar code that you know operates in, the, in a very similar way. And this is actually not dissimilar to how you would get started on a lot of software projects, particularly if you go to work at a big company, they're not gonna ask you to do something super novel right away. They might ask you to fix a bug, which we'll do a little bit of. They might ask you to you know, have a new feature or something like that. But a lot of times what you wanna do is actually mimic the code that you're given, right? So make some small changes or build something that's similar to something that's already there. That also shows respect for the code that you're given, which is good, right? Because that's usually been written by people that have been working there for a while. And they like to see people who are willing to understand what they've done and work in the same style. Okay. What are we doing here, right? So this is the code that defines the main activity. Now there's a separate part of the project that we'll look at later that defines how things look. Um, but what this code does is it defines how things behave. Now there is a little bit of layout that gets intermixed here. There's some code here that's uh, here because it affects how the app looks. But mostly what we're gonna do in this file, in this code is define how the app behaves. And that frequently means indicating, for example, when somebody clicks on something, what should happen, right? When somebody enters text into the search bar, what should happen, right? Things like this. The, uh, you'll notice up here that we've extended something called the app compat activity. The name of that's not particularly important, but the idea is by extending this, we are creating a new Android activity that can then be shown on the screen. Now, as we're going along, you should definitely uh, use Google as your friend to find out things about some of the concepts here. So I'm going to look up activity here, and this will, it says a single focus thing that the user can do. Um, the activity takes care of creating a window for you, blah, 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 right? So there's some information about, about what goes on in here. Now, activities in Android have what's called a life cycle. And you can think about that representing their in a, the, the pattern of their interaction with the user. So when I launched the app, you saw the activity started up. This corresponds to an event uh, that's called onCreate. And it says onCreate is the first method called when the activity is created. The code in here normally sets up things that indicate how the activity is going to look. So the code in here, um, or how it's going to behave, right? How it's going to interact with the user. The code in here affects what you see on the screen. Um, and so for example, let's, uh, let's change things a little bit here. Um, Let's see, I'm trying to think of a, a thing that we can do. Well, well, here's the thing that we can do, actually. Um, let's just comment out this piece of code. So this is the code that actually uh, retrieves the list of restaurants and sticks it in. Oh, I'm going to have to do more than this. Let's just delete it. Ah, we'll get rid of it. We'll, we'll bring it back in just a sec. 
Um, so this is the code that actually gets the list of restaurants and initializes the display. So now if I rerun the app, what you're going to see is that it's going to start up again and there's going to be a search bar, but there will be no actual data that's displayed in the app. It'll just display basically a blank list, right? Um, and so it's starting, it's starting, I see the search bar, but there's no data, right? And that's because one of the things that happens when the app starts up is that it retrieves this list of restaurants from the server and uses that to populate the list that you see in front of you. Okay, so um, there's other things. We'll come. We'll keep coming back to this code over and over again over the pet over the next uh, over the life of our work on the MP. So you don't have to worry about understanding everything right away, but you might mess around a little bit with this code and try to see what happens if you remove various parts. Um, okay. There's other things that happen here. So uh, we, what we do is we create something called a data binding that allows us to interact with very parts of the UI in ways that we're going to have to uh, learn about more in the future. Um, but this, let me move this over here a little bit so we can see more of the code. Um, this, this code that we just used, that we just uh, removed is important, right? And what it does is it's responsible for retrieving that information using it to populate the display. I'll rerun the app so that we can see our familiar list of restaurants again while we keep talking. All right. Last thing I want to do, you know, you can read through some of the code in here and there, there might be some mistakes in this file that you need to address, right? The last thing I want to do here is talk about logging, how you get uh, your Android app to display information as it runs. Now in Android Studio, when you run your app, there's this log cat tab down here and you want to open that up and you want to choose, let's see, this is the right app, right? And I need to make sure that it's, and, and then I'm gonna, let me try uh, shutting this down. Uh, there we go. So now you'll see that when I open this, I'm seeing actually quite a bit of information. So, so let me run the app again. One of the things that could be a little disconcerting about Android is that there's lots and lots of information that's being printed uh, that you didn't add to your app, right? So this is logging from the various components and libraries that your app uses, the other code your app is using. But we can add our own information. This allows us to do sort of printf style things, uh, println style things. Now, if you just do something like system.out.println uh, hello world, let's try putting a little message in here. Um, you can use println in, in your code um, in Android, and it will show up in the output. Now, you have to look for it a little bit differently because of something I'm going to tell you in a minute. Um, and so down here, so one thing I could do is I could just look really carefully. Oh, there it is, look, hello world. Um, but Android actually has a much more sophisticated logging system that's built into it that we suggest you use instead. Uh, and the way you do that is you do this. So you do log and then you do dot and there's different levels. And so the way you uh, add some debugging information is you provide two things, you provide a tag. Oh, I need to import this, right? So if I do that, this an, uh, so what I did is I did, uh, in my case, control space, and then Android will automatically do the import for you. So you definitely want to figure out how to get Android Studio to do this type of thing. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do log.d tag hello world. The tag allows you to organize your log messages to make them more easy to, to, to look for. Uh, the tag that we've created for you is essentially going to be main activity. It's defined up here as part of the class. Um, so now let's try rerunning the app again. And you're going to see if you use uh, system.out.println, the tag is system.out and the level is info, right? That's just the default uh, setting. But now you'll see that I've used main activity. And the thing that's cool about this is that I can do something like that. So now I'm seeing only the main activity tag. Um, and I can also set different uh, debug levels, right? So when I go to info, I'm seeing, so these are different levels of severity. You'll see at the very top is error and assert, and the very bottom is verbose. So the idea is that this allows us to log messages that might be, some of them might be very verbose, and I only want to see them when I'm looking at really detailed information about how the app is working, and others might be much more important, like an error message, right? And so I can set different levels here. Um, okay, so now I see just, I can see just the messages generated by a single tag. That can be very, very useful when you're trying to figure out why your code is doing something or is not doing something. Okay, so that's a brief introduction to the overall app structure. Um, we also talked a little bit about the Android manifest. We've started to look at the code in the main activity.java file, but again, there's gonna be things in here that you don't understand yet, and that's totally okay. 
Um, and we talked a little bit about how to log information in Android and where to find it in Android Studio. Because one of the things you'll be doing is you understand as you work your way through the code and try to understand it better and get things to happen and fix mistakes is that you'll want to be able to see the output, right? You might want to add print type statements. And so we talked about how to do that as well.